In our Spanish cannon wheels, we have them now in what's called the spider form. The next step is to cut tannins, little dowels, on the end of these spokes so that we can assemble fellows out on the outer rim. These fellows are sawn into sections that will span two spokes, referred to as sawn section fellows. And several videos back, you watch these fellows being sawn. So the outside diameter of these wheels on the wood is going to be 48 inches and the depth of the fellows are four and a half inches. Now because of the dish that I'm building into these wheels, the spokes are angled up as they come out of the hub. But the face of the fellows are going to be on the same plane that's represented by the saw that I have the spider sitting on. So I can take my square and figure out what the angle of the shoulders of the tenon is going to be. This tenon will also be cut on the same plane as the saw is that the spider is sitting on. Now the diameter of the tenons that I'm going to cut on these spokes is going to be inch and a quarter. And since the tenons are not going to be cut straight in line with the spokes, I have to determine the placement of the tenon, and especially the outside extremity of the tenon where I will begin the cut. If I begin cutting the tenon as it was centered on the end of the spoke, by the time I got to the base of the tenon, it would be too close to the leading edge of the spoke. Now, in order for these spokes to fit into the tenon cutter itself, I need to take basically what is a large pencil sharpener called a spoke cone, and I'm going to put a point on the end of these spokes that will fit into the cutter itself. It is this point of the cone that will now determine the starting point where I'm going to cut the tenons on these spokes. I have a mark on the floor that is lined up directly in line with the chuck on this drill. So I'm putting the bottom spoke on that mark and so the tenon is going to be cut straight to the opposite spoke on the other end. This is what allows me to cut the tenons on a flat plane directly in line with the opposite spoke and not following the angle of the spoke itself. So since these fellows are four and a half inches deep, I need four and a half inch long tenons. But the throw on my drill press doesn't go that far. That's why I stopped in the middle and I have to adjust the tenon cutter up and down in the chuck to accommodate the extra length. Now there's been several that have asked me in the comments in the past how I like working with this mahogany in the wheels. This is one case where I'd say not so much. 
as this cutter is cutting cross grain on this mahogany is just ripping and tearing big chunks out of it. So I'm going to take some fiberglass filament strapping tape, put it right on the edge of the shoulder that I want, and try to give some support to this fairly soft mahogany wood. Even paying special attention to having a sharp blade, this mahogany just wanted to fray. The tape kept it from chipping and it did finally clean up.
Now most of you are going to be way ahead of the game here. We know that the outside distance between the ends of these tenons are two inches wider than they are at the shoulder of the tenons because of the wedge shape. So I've got to pull these outside ends of the tenons two inches to make them fit the inside width of the holes on the fellow sections on the inside face. So these are just to the point of going to break and one little trick I've got is to take a little angle off of the outside edges of the tenons that gives me just a little fudge factor and oftentimes it's the difference between breaking a spoke and making it work. Well, the first one is always the most nerve-wracking. But, now I see it'll work. I only have 71 more to do.
When I'm doing all these saw cuts at each joint, I'm not only just making sure the joints fit properly, but I'm also adjusting the circumference of the rim, the outside fellows, so that when I set the tire, all the joints at the fellow sections, spokes to the fellows, and the spokes as they hit the hub, will also come together and tighten up at the same time. Well, I went through the process of doing this one by itself just to kind of figure out the logistics. I was really curious how this mahogany was going to work because a lot of this goes under a lot of stress when it's going together. But it seems like it's going to work. You're going to find out in the next one that I've got a few things that I'm going to change, a few adjustments, but that's just kind of how it goes. So once again, appreciate you watching and hanging in there.